Hello everyone, welcome to Scorpion Venom Studio Games. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I am currently developing a video game using Unreal Engine and its marketplace. And we're going to go ahead and continue with water physics, continuing with the buoyancy. And we're going to jump right in into our document that I was reading previously. We're going to go over some of the seamless sea state transitions. In the previous video, I was going over the manual points and some of the outer, outer points that have been set up with the buoyancy system by using single points and outer points. Now here it says uh, with the seamless sea state transitions, which says a physical water surface can do seamless sea state changes. This means that while the game is running, the wave parameters are manipulated in such a way that a seamless transition to a new sea state defined by a new wind speed, new fetch length, and new wind direction is activated in a given time. Watch this video to get an impression how the transition looks like. Now, there is a link here that you guys can um, watch. I, I can also include this in the description. This is not my video. This is actually a video of the creator who uh, made this project. Uh, but to kind of give you the demonstration of what they're talking about is, let me just bring this down a little bit. And here is our water plane. And if I were to, um, where did it go? Somehow it fell right through it. Okay. So here's our ocean. And if you were to look at the water settings, under the default, we have different type of speeds, wind speed at 35 and fetch length at 30, uh, at 100. And if we were to change this, I'm trying to get as close to the ground as possible. Now let's go ahead, change the camera speed a little bit. So that way I can actually move and not fall through the floor. And that being said, let's go ahead and change the wind speed to, Let's say, uh, actually, let's keep the wind speed at 35 and let, let's change the fetch length to uh, 1500. But before I do that, let's uh, have a preview of what the ocean would actually look like from being rendered far out. Okay, so if you look, as far as you can see, you have. Uh, ocean waves appearing pretty close to the shore and they're very repetitive and the reason for that is because of the fetch length is only at 100. Now if we are to go back to our settings and of course the reason the waves are so high is because of the wind speed. So if we keep the wind speed at 35 and change the fetch length to 750, now we have much greater waves coming through and uh, they don't break as easily. Now this is something like this will be set up farther in the ocean. And of course, we're gonna bring up, uh, actually we're not gonna bring up the water uh, to a higher level, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna decrease um, the actual ocean bed, the floor, just like right here you see, this is something I was developing back uh, in the beginning with a couple tools to uh, create such a pattern for the ocean. Uh, when I bought this island, uh, it came with the flat planes, so just as you can see in the back. And we're going to go back and eventually uh, create a pattern just like this. This was done with a couple brushes to create a such a cool landscape. Now, we're going to go over some of the stuff with a smooth tool to make sure we don't have uh, triangulations um, appearing on the island just like this. I'm going to have to smooth it all out. And then we'll we'll do that later as we develop the game as well. Uh, I'm just trying to finish setting up the ocean system. And like I've mentioned previously before, we're going to play with wind speed and fetch length and every time we change something we're going to uh, load up the level so that way you can see how it lo will render through entire game if you were to play it and of course uh, do not worry about the fact that the water is kind of dragging over here and going over the island uh, this is something that we'll have to set up so that way there is no water past the island 
so that way it stops on the border and uh, we'll have to change different fetch lengths for this ocean either we'll have to create different ocean materials separately for uh, each location so like farther out in the ocean we're gonna have bigger waves closer to the shore they're gonna be much smaller and they will actually have foam appearing and things like that i'm gonna set up some decals for that as well we'll have to look into to see what we actually can do with this uh, but there's here's an idea to what the ocean would look like and let's say if you're farther in the ocean and uh, if it was let's say during a, a storm day but nonetheless let's go ahead and see how the wind speed is going to affect the ocean waves with the same wavelength but at a different sp uh, wind speed so we will leave the fetch length at 750 and reduce the wind speed to let's say 5. Now we're going to go ahead and press play and see the difference. Okay now the ocean is much more calm. It still has waves building up but at a very low height but at farther distance and if you look right here this is where the waves turn to build up and what we'll have to do is add some foam to it I'm not sure what's going on I, on my screen it looks like it's going black the screen it's like flickering but closer to the shores we'll have these waves somewhat crashing into the beach the other thing i want to actually mention is that if you look at my island in general if i were to zoom out all the way around you see the sandbars now that's actually going to be changed we're going to have spots and locations where it's going to be breaking along the shore of actual rocks and there will be cliffs set up all the way around the island so there's going to be only certain locations where you have an open area with um, available walking um, how to put it this way if you look at the ocean in general over here or the, the sand part yeah it's it's flat surface and uh, the idea is to replicate uh, some of the real locations where let's say if we look at this mountain right here uh, something like this would be closer to the water where ocean waves will be breaking into the island and uh, looking at this now we have uh, grass floating up here that we'll have to make sure that we will recalculate the mask and that was because uh, I think I was doing some sculpting over here that the grass ended up sticking out like this it's kind of strange we'll have to make sure that doesn't actually uh, happen but it's nice to see the sun rays coming through the grass so if you look as you can see there's a lot of um, errors that needs to be fixed and um, even casting the shadows on the grass um, like I said this grass is going to get replaced period uh, this isn't just not really my main focus right now this was all going to get um, taken care of in the future but uh, the main focus is to finish the ocean first and then that way uh, I can get back to uh, doing a couple other things but that being said I have a lot of different packages and products where I will be able to use a lot of different stone formations and cliffs that will set up through the island so that way you will have to move around strategically and um, not all the boats will be able to come ashore uh, since you're gonna have a lot of different cliffs and things like that so since it's going to be open world uh, gameplay concept there's going to be a lot of different clans set through this island uh, if you have not seen my website actually check it out there's a uh, page on that website that i've included with all different clans that are going to be on the island obviously there's going to be other characters that are not part of any clans at all they will be individuals that you'll meet or you'll have to either fight with them or um, team up and things like that so there's a lot of things that will be happening here as we develop the game but the idea is to uh, create a more realistic uh, scenario where you'll have to strategically um, set up either your own camp or uh, attack certain locations uh, based on 
the actual landscape of the world. So there's a lot of things that's going to be evolved. But that being said, it doesn't mean that you can't climb these cliffs or rocks. Uh, we will be setting up as a, another uh, project that will allow us to climb not only the environment but also buildings. Uh, think of the similar idea of Assassin's Creed. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, um, I can show you the project real quick. I've pulled up a project that is in my library. It's called Custom Climbing, and it's only like 35 megabytes, but it contains a lot of different blueprints that will show you what you can actually achieve with this. Um, I'll pull up a couple pictures, demonstration. So this would be a character like it would be in Assassin's Creed where we'll set up certain locations and spots where you can actually climb. Um, this, of course, will probably be added to all the cliffs and rocks before we start sculpting the world so that while we have all this implemented in it, that will save us time to go back and add this. But uh, it seems like well, I'll have to do manual setup for all the items. And of course, this game is going to be developed um, many, many years from now. And uh, if you look at this, uh, there's different ways of setting up uh, spots on how you can climb. Uh, like I've said, kind of reminds me of Assassin's Creed, really. And then you can set up your own locations where a character can grab and certain things. And then we'll have to make sure we set it up so that way you can hold on two items at the same, or two locations at the same time. Same thing, go for the feet. So that way you f move freely. And it shows you the locations that are here. It's for the ladders. Something like that we'll have to add as well. So that way you can actually climb. Uh, and if you look at it, it's in a foreign language. I can't really understand it. Don't know what language is made in or written, but it is available on the marketplace, and everything is actually written in English under the uh, what do you call it? The event graphs and what do you call it? The, the example characters right here, the blueprint. So it says right even right here. But you can look at all these different functions and what they do. And uh, it's available in the marketplace. It's called Custom Movement, done by Ju Sik Lee. And it has, let's see how many blueprints it has. So we have Custom Movement, Ladders, Climbing, and then Network Play. And there are seven blueprints. So there's a blueprint to hold, ladder, ladder from the top, stretchable ladder, stretchable ladder from top, uh, custom movement, components, example uh, for the character. So we'll have to dig into it as we build the game. But uh, not trying to divert from the project that we're currently working on. We're going to go back to our island, but I'm just trying to give you an idea. Let's go ahead back to our, our document on Wiki. We left off on this link. It says the map that was used to create this video is included with a physical water surface. It's named C State Transition Demo, and it's also available in the project as well. And this is the video pretty much demonstrating exactly what I've just shown you with the wavelength and things like that. And it says have a look in the Blueprint BP Transition Demo in this map to see how the C State transitions are triggered. The map wind direction transition shows how to trigger and wind direction transition. See the BP wind direction demo blueprint for details. And I'll look into this as we um, build this water physics. It says to trigger a sea state transition, call the change sea state function of the water setting blueprint. The input arguments are new wind speed. It's actually in meters per second. And the fetch length is actually in kilometers. And new wind direction is in degrees. And transition time is in seconds. And transition quality. And over here, change C state, we have uh, everything listed right here. And then I'll uh, open up this blueprint in a second. And the easiest way to find this blueprint is just by copying this name. We're going to go back into our project. And we're going to drop that in. And we're going to open this up. And hopefully it will... Here we go. Change the C state right here. So we have the new wind speed. Uh, we'll have literal wind speed right here at 5. And also the fetch length at 500. 
And I'm wondering if this is actually what I've set it up here. I'm going to minimize this. So right here, 5 and 750. And this is actually set at 500. <clears throat> but I think it right here it can be changed uh, for, oh, it's for each individual. Okay, so we have different speed variations and things like that. So we have different console commands and current wind speed as string, speed as as string, okay. If we look into it, I'll have to definitely do some more research into these blueprints and see what we can do to um, set it up in a way that each location has its own wind speed and the fetch length. So that way I can avoid a water disappearing like this on the shore and reappearing. Uh, again, we'll have to go back and uh, make some of the locations a little bit deeper than what it is. So that way, the farther you go into the ocean, the deeper it gets. Uh, of course, this is the lowest point at the moment, uh, but I will uh, do another tutorial on how I create landscape just like this. Actually, I might even include the link from my previous video that this is what I've created using uh, one or two different brushes. And we'll have to go back and add a couple um, soft brushes so that way we can soften all these edges like I've men pre previously mentioned. And the best part about this, uh, this is not going to be just one texture. It, well, there's just technically two. We have s a rock formation and we have sand, and then there is a little bit of transition in between. Now, this is just the beginning of the build, so there's going to be definitely more textures. Uh, on, the on the shore of the ocean, we're going to have a different uh, sand, so it's going to be a wet sand, we're going to have uh, different shells, things like that, you'll be able to find other things, and not only that, uh, if you have not seen yet, but I already have a project here uh, ready to be worked on in the future with the corals, so this is something that I have, and I have uh, lots of different corals that we will, I keep saying we, uh, that I will be adding to the ocean floor and I'll be showing you how you can create different variety of different corals mixed together different colors different shapes and rotate you know uh, using all these materials and meshes will create hundreds if not thousands of different variations for this world so that way none of this will look the same and that's gonna be a pretty cool ocean floor and if you look at this I mean that's pretty cool stuff so I'm very excited I actually worked with this before but um, I haven't shared with you guys yet so there's going to be a lot of different cool things happening underwater, so it's not going to be boring, trust me. I love video games in general, and I love uh, swimming underwater. Actually, um, the inspiration behind this will be Subnautica. So if you ever play that game, think of it uh, the same way with the ocean part, where this is going to be similar like to Subnautica, but uh, no offense to anybody, but better. Because uh, I will be putting a lot of time and effort making sure that all the corals set up in the proper locations, that they're not interfering with each other. Uh, also, there will be collectible items. You know, you'll probably be able to uh, gather them and make some sort of resources out of them or craft something out of it. Uh, it's going to be different uh, colors. There's going to be a lot of cool things happening. And unfortunately, not like I said, not trying to... Um, disrespect anybody loving the game i i do love a, a subnautica game but i felt like it was not enough of ocean uh marine world underwater yet it was the most beautiful game i've ever seen uh, i personally believe it could have been done better and i will show you in the future why i believe that way because i know with how much stuff i have i know there's only says 37 uh, different meshes but believe me i have hundreds of different corals that will blow your mind away and what we can actually do with this and uh don't think that i'll be actually placing each individual coral through the entire world that would be insane that's uh, unrealistic but i will be uh, showing you on how to use unreal engine uh, tools and certain things that will help and assist me to create a better and much more awesome uh, landscape and underwater world. So this is just a quick demonstration of what to expect. And again, I keep going off the topic here, but I'm just trying to visually give you a couple ideas. And uh, none of this is actually listed on my website yet. 
but I do have clans listed and uh, tribes and the locations and things like that and their weapons. So uh, yeah, it's, it's just a lot of stuff going on in the background that I have to still accomplish. But going back to our physical water, seems like I've been jumping a lot. Uh, I will play more with this later. Seems like I don't need to do it at the moment, uh, but I will have to do more research and setting this up in a way that it will look more realistic. And it says, if the new values of, for the wind speed and fetch length are very different, it is advisable to get there with multiple small steps, meaning multiple consecutive, consecutive calls to the change C state functions that each change the C state just a bit. This way, the transition will look more natural because the algorithms only need to figure out a good transition for value that are no too different. So I think this is exactly what they're talking about right here, change C state. And then uh, maybe I'll even have to set up a specific X and Y locations to where it's going to be happening. It says the minimum transition time that should be used depends on how much wind speed and fetch length are changing. As you can see in the video above, in some cases, 10 seconds are enough to get a nice looking transition. And <clears throat> however, if you can, you should use higher values to make the transition look more natural. If you change the wind direction by a large amount, make sure that the transition time is long enough. And then I'll have to definitely save some of this stuff separately in my documents so that I don't have to go back to this website and try to scroll down and figure it all these out. If you are, have the same project, guys, I would recommend you know saving some of this information for future uh, references. I'm actually going to copy this right now and save this so I can actually read this later. And uh, actually, I'm going to do it this way. <clears throat> save all this, actually. So that way I have this saved somewhere in my files because I'll be going back to this and trying to figure this out. It says, with update for a physical water surface, and didn't really know there was four updates, but it says the performance of sea state transitions was improved. If you need to improve the performance further, you can select a lower transition quality right here. If you use a lower quality setting, the transition calculation will run at a lower frame rate than the gain. When using a lower quality, you might see a jugger in the water motion during the transition. So guys, make sure you don't do that. And I think mine is actually set to, oh, you know what? I actually turned that off, but it, it was set to Epic, I believe. I didn't really pay attention to that, but I guess I'll have to copy this first, uh, go back to that blueprint and verify that it is set to Epic. So all of them are set to Epic. And then <clears throat> we're going to have to go back and play with this in a little bit. All right, so next one, if you uh, want to delay execution of the subsequent code until the transition has finished, add a delay node uh, after the change C state node. And it says setting up a player controller boat. It's going to be very interesting. Uh, I think I'm going to break the video here and make a separate video regarding a setting up a player controller boat because I feel like that's going to take us a while. And if I, you seen the previous video of my boat, and actually in this video as well, I was showing how there's some water protruding through the boat. This is exactly what I'll be covering. And we're actually going to be doing some things, making sure that the boat actually doesn't have water in it. And I feel like it's going to take a good 30 minutes to an hour either of actual demonstration. And of course, it's going to take me multiple hours testing a couple things out if I don't run into any issues. But if we just skip through real quick just to see what to expect in the next video, it's going to be setting up a player controller boat. Uh, we'll have to look at the querying the wave height from the blueprints. Let's see what else I have network replication. I'm not sure what that is even yet. I haven't read through, read through most of the stuff, but there's some documentation and pretty much what everything is. And I actually would like to read this all to you guys so that way you're familiar with what all these are. And this is going to be a completely separate video as well, showing exactly what each blueprint is or all the default settings are. This is all done through this project. So you won't see this in your Unreal Engine unless you actually have this project in your inventory or in your library. So I would like to read through all this and then look through some of the other stuff that is listed in here to get more familiar with this project because we'll be definitely playing with this for a very, very long time.
And then as of right now, I'm just setting up a, one boat and going through a couple uh, blueprints. Like I said, just trying to get familiar with what I'm actually using and what I'm adding to the game. And then once I finish reading this, we're going to move on to other projects. And I will be touching the water uh, physics later as we build the game. I mean, not as heavily as now, but I will be showing a couple other things. Because if you've been following my channel and if you've been... Um, sorry, I'm like scrolling so quick. I hope I'm not making you dizzy. But... If you've been following my channel, let me show you something real quick. And if you actually haven't, I've pulled up a website, ScorpionMinimStudioGames.com. Check it out. It's also in my description. In the YouTube channel, under Clients, we have... Let's see, who do we have here? Uh, Army of the Dead. So they are the pirates that are going to be in the game. Uh, they are the original... Um, people who have visited the island before uh, the alien space crash and you're probably thinking what am I talking about yeah the story is very very deep and uh, too much to explain in this video at the moment but I will be covering this in a later future videos but the idea is that you're gonna have we're gonna have pirate ships in the game and obviously it will be available for the players to um, get a hands on it. Uh, some of these probably going to be underwater sunk and some of the stuff is going to be Actually available to you if you of course uh, you'll have to find them first and uh, They will not be just floating in the middle of the ocean uh, We have army of the dead who are going to be in, in control of these and uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. So you'll be able to build your own boats in the future. And hopefully these bigger boats will float as good as that other boat did. And we'll have to make sure that there's no water inside of it. And if you look inside of there a little bit, you can see that there are some supplies there. Obviously, you'll be able to find guns and things like that in general. Of course, not going to be too many of them, but there will be stuff available. And maybe you'll be able to even build them in the future. But remember, we also have Vikings who's going to be coming to our shore. And they are also going to have their own boats. And these boats are actually called Drakkar. And the boats will have no... Uh, well, there will probably be some storage food available when they come to the, to the island. And they will actually come after the plane crash. Um, because they are actually going to be there sometime after you've already built a settlement and things like that. So these guys will have some boats to bring in as well and then maybe you'll have a chance to get a hands on it as well but remember they will be very um not only powerful but gonna have lots of weapons and a lot of uh, protection so it's not gonna be that easy to just come and take all these things but check it out guys there's a lot of information on here too if you're not familiar with it, my website yet but that being said i'm gonna wrap up this video so that way i can continue to start working on setting up a uh, player controller c controlled boat now as of right now this is going to be more of a controlling a boat with just controllers but hopefully once we figure out how it works we'll do it in a way where giving an example of army of the dead if you look actually you know what it's not even this picture doesn't have one but i'll make sure to show you but you'll be able to control the shape obviously from the top here and then Let's say if I actually have the boat, you can actually select an item and if you press F, it will zoom right into the object that you're trying to uh, find. And then you can see that it has <coughs> paddles. So something like this will be required for you to paddle the boat. And uh, depending on what kind of boat it is, maybe you'll be able to build your own out of you know wood scrap or something like that. And then uh, create your own paddle or something like that will have to add that into the game too boat underwater where did it go ah so things like this here we go our boat floats underwater but it's pretty cool too actually um obviously it's not what it was supposed to do <laughs> but as of right now it's floating underwater guys um yeah so there's a lot of bugs i mean that's one thing you have to deal with when you're developing a game the only one downside is that you can't actually see it right now here it's popping in and out we'll have to make sure that this uh, mesh and texture is also translucent in a way so you can actually see through it uh, that's something i will be looking into as well I'm probably behind the scenes so that way i'm ready to show you guys how it's actually done that being said i'm gonna wrap the video up just want to thank everyone for tuning in with this channel thank you all for the new subscriptions I appreciate that. Don't forget to give me a 
thumbs up if you like the video. Kind of tells me that this is the content that I should be uploading. Uh, I keep track of that as well. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, click that notification button to be notified every time I uh, upload new videos. Until next time.